narcolepsy has some comorbidities that are really important. 25% of the patients with narcolepsy also can have sleep apnea. And actually, I've been told that that estimation is, is, is low, that it's more 25 to 50%, which the incidence of sleep apnea in a general population in general is pretty high. Also, insomnia is a very common complaint in narcolepsy. About 50% of patients with narcolepsy also can complain of insomnia as well. The biggest difficulty that I have sometimes treating narcolepsy actually isn't the medications themselves, but it's, it's the family support. When the family doesn't understand what's going on, you know, the, the patient doesn't need to hear, okay, you're having another sleepy moment. God, I wish I could sleep like you can. Or, or hearing from family members, okay, we're just lazy because you're sleeping all the time. They have an objective disorder of sleepiness. And understanding normal sleep is actually what helps in understanding the diagnosis, evaluation, and the treatments in narcolepsy. The intent of this sleep education series actually isn't to talk about different medications. It's really to talk about basic sleep science. One of the things that I do want to mention in the treatments of narcolepsy is that there are both medication and non-medication approaches. Some of the non-medication approaches actually do involve lifestyle adjustment. You can still drive, however, driving three or four hours to a different city alone probably is not the, the best idea. You can still go out, but being the driver after midnight is probably not the best idea we can schedule naps. That is a non-medication approach. Another thing is avoiding heavy meals. You had lunch, okay, you don't need that big oversized cookie afterwards, you're gonna fall asleep afterwards. Treatment of the sleepiness, we have some medications that we can give in, in the morning time to help make us a little bit more alert. The flip side of the coin is that we also need to try to avoid sedating medications. If you have a blood pressure problem, you try to pick the medication that is less sedating. Same thing with mood disorders. If you also have a mood disorder and we need an antidepressant, we try to avoid the sedating one. Rather, we use one that may help make us a little bit more alert. And the treatment of the sleepiness is different than the treatment of the cataplexy. In treating the sleepiness, you are trying to give someone an alerting agent to make them more alert. The treatment of, of the cataplexy or the low muscle tone, we have to take a step back and remember that that low muscle tone is an intrusion of REM. Well, how can we treat that? We can stabilize the REM or use what's called a REM suppressant. A lot of the antidepressants are REM suppressing medications and we use them commonly in narcolepsy, not for depression, although that can exist as well, but we use it for stabilizing the REM, suppressing the REM intrusions that can occur during the daytime. There is one medication that you give at night and that actually does help with consolidation of sleep and it does help with having less cataplexy in the daytime and it also does help make us more alert in the daytime as well. That is sodium oxybate.